Well, hello! I'd like to welcome you to another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks that I've been using throughout the week. So let's take a look at them. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens and inks, both new and old and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, uh, my parents are coming? How many of you still have your parents around? Let's talk about this. So, let's look at the pens. Alright, whoops. Uh, from left to right, sorry, got my directions confused there. I have Platinum 3776 with a Sheng Yo finish. Pretty. I have, let's turn it this way, Pilot Custom uh, 823. I have... Um, <laughs> why am I drawing a blank? Because the name's so complicated. A Parson Italics Essential, or an Italics Parsons Essential. That's it. Parson, italics Parsons Essential. I have a Camlin Sovereign, which, by the way, will be next week's review. I have a Visconti Mirage. I have a Platinum President. I have a Prima 61, a nice Hungarian pen, which I think I reviewed that this week. And I have a Birmingham Pens Model A, which I finally put up its first impression this week. As always, I'll be using my BOMO Art Journal. And if you hear a little bit of extra noise in the background today, it's because it is hot outside. I uh, turned off the air conditioner, but I left the fan running, so I thought, we're going to compromise and live with that. <laughs> Plus, I'm filming two videos in a row, and it's going to get a little toasty in here before I'm done. So, let's take a look at how they write. My first pen is writing kind of pale. This is my Platinum 3776 with a... Uh, kind of understated Sheng Yo finish on it. And the ink I have in it is Roar and Klingner Helianthus. I've not been using this pen as much as I thought I would just lately. Uh, why? Because it's kind of a specialized purposes type of pen. And, uh, or ink, I should, well, both, what the heck, let's be honest, it's both. And I've been working on, uh, getting ready for my parents to visit, so, uh, just not doing as much writing as I'd like. But I think it's a very attractive ink. My next pen has been, well, has been my daily writer for a while. Um, running through its full fill. Actually in a, one of, I can't remember if it was a review or first impression, but I used up the last of the ink that's in this. Uh, I, I'm on track to use up several bottles of ink this summer, so I'm excited about that. And I'm not going to replace those bottles either. Just try and make me. And this ink was superfluous anyway, because I have several bottles of blank ink. Uh, this ink is a Roshizuku Takesumi, which is an attractive enough black. But Lamy Black, and uh, Pelican Black, and Noodler's Black, and Parker Black, and... Many other blacks I can think of are much cheaper. And this one isn't decorative enough to fill in that spot. So, uh, yeah, I uh, emptied out the bottle and I'm not going to fill it again. Or replace it, I should say. I might fill it with something else. It's one of those small decorative Orochizuku bottles. That's how I was able to run through it so quickly. This is the pen I had trouble with its name, so let's see if I write it correctly. Ital, oops. Okay, so there is the problem with this particular ink. This is Noodler's Periwinkle, and I didn't have trouble in the 
bro in the broad nib, but I am having a bit of trouble here in this fine nib. Uh, before I give it a little squirt, let's just see if I can get it going. Okay, I'm going to turn the converter just a bit, try and get some ink up there in the feed. Uh, what happens with this ink, I found in a lot of pens, although apparently not in the broad italics nib, but clearly in the fine one which isn't a knock on the pen at all, it's just a thing with this ink and most pens. Doggone. This ink just does not... So now I'm trying wiping it on a my ink cloth. This ink just does not like to, sta like to flow. So... I'm about ready to say to hell with it. Clean it out of the pen. This, if, if you don't write, of course, most pens, if you don't write with this ink every day, it does this. There we go. Italics. Not a knock on the pen again. This is a thing about this ink. Uh, and I should just note that, according to Nathan Tardif himself, the color has nothing to do with uh, the, the flower. You know, I think of Hyacinth Bouquet and her hand-parented periwinkles on her Royal Dutton, Dulton. Um, this is, actually has to do with a color that's found on the curve of some kind of snail from New England. I'm not from New England. Nathan Tardif is, and that's from the horse's mouth. This will be next week's review. This is a Camlin Sovereign. You'll hear me mispronounce it in the first scene in the video, and then I'll remember it's not the German Pelican Sovereign. So uh, then I had to correct myself for the rest of the video. I feel like the next time I fill up a pen with this, oops, this ink, I need to do it in a very broad nib so I can really show it off, like that one. but a very broad nib so I can show it off. Now this is a fine point nib, I would say. Semi-hooded-ish. Uh, again, you'll see it next week. So those who've been asking for an Indian pen on my channel, you'll get one next week. You're also going to get a Middle Eastern pen next week. This is the Italian Visconti Mirage. If you can't tell from the color change, the, and yes, this ink does go through color change. This is uh, an Iron Gall ink. This is Platinum Classic. Citrus Black. And then we get to one of my favorite pens, Platinum President. And I have a broad nib that's been ground to a cursive italic, which you can see the close-ups if you watch the review. Uh, the ink in it... <laughs> now you can see it. The ink in it is Private Reserve. Buttercup. Which... Uh, 
looks a lot like, you can look at the samples, it looks a lot like the Roar and Klingner Helianthus. Uh, I, I'd say the Helianthus has a slightly more orange character to it. Both very attractive inks, but both need to be in a broader nib. I did a review of this pen this week. Uh, filmed it actually a week or two ago, but finally showed up this week. This is a... Uh, by the way, from what I said, this part works. This is like an eyedropper almost. And then there's the cap, which seems added on. But the key to this pen... Oh! Didn't see that coming. Must be upset that I turned off the air conditioner. <laughs> Prima 61. And the ink in it is a Pelican. Or nib in it, sorry. Oblique medium. The ink is Rohrer and Klingner. Alt Bordeaux. And finally, this week's first impression, although it now has a different ink in it. This is my Birmingham pens. With a broad nib. And it is writing in Girban Ombre de Birmanie. I feel like that's another ink I could use up this year. So those are the pens and inks that I'm using this week. Uh, as I mentioned, my parents are actually coming this week. I, uh, they should be here tomorrow. They uh, won't fly for some reason, so they're coming in from Pennsylvania. Uh, anyway, so I'll be entertaining them for a few days. Luckily, my first impression and my uh, next review are already uploaded and just hidden because I can schedule them on YouTube. And you will be seeing me in the same shirt because I don't really feel like changing. I just want to get this over with. Uh, I am going to fill next week's pens in use early because I don't know exactly when they're leaving because, of course, they can't tell me that. Uh, I'm going to experiment a little bit with color adjustment on this video to see, see what I can do. Uh, I know I have to adjust the writing samples differently from my, the me part. We'll just see how it, how it goes. I uh, had some suggestions about it, so I'm going to try it. I'm also going to try it. There's a driving video coming up Sunday that uh, I did some color adjusting. I almost, in rewatching it, feel like, ooh, may have taken it a little too far, but it definitely got rid of the grayness. So we'll talk about that at uh, some future date. Uh, in the meantime, I, uh, it's hot because you know, my parents complain about the heat here, but yet here they are coming in the middle of July. So uh, that's what happens. They would have come a few weeks earlier when I told them, you know, it doesn't get hot late June, early July, but no. <laughs> so, uh, oh well, we'll put them up by uh, getting the house cleaned up for them. That's part of why this was late. I've just been kind of cleaning and organizing and getting everything perfect. And, uh, and then I said, oh yeah, pens in use. So I'm going to do two of them here. And then I'm going to go outside and do some work. We have the county fair going on right now too, but uh, I don't know if I'll get over there. Maybe after they get here. But busy right now. I have to grocery shop too because I don't have enough food to feed them. So lots of things going on. Um, somebody mentioned, this will be a little short today, but somebody mentioned about, you know, do you have all new pens each week? Uh, the answer is no. Uh, you may notice repeats. In fact, let's switch to some B-roll footage. B-roll. This is this week's. 
This is last week's. And who do we have here? The Italics, the Camlin, um, the Platinum, the Visconti Mirage, and the Prima 61. So yeah, I, I always have some repeats. Next week we'll have some repeats too. Uh, I'm basically, I'm going to cycle through some of the other pens that are out. I always have more pens in use than I show here. Uh, any pen that's a first impression can't show up here, except maybe a quick preview of it, nothing writing, until it's actually appeared on the channel in its own video. Now, pens that uh, were bought before I started doing first impressions and have already shown up on pens in use, they're, they're fair game, but anything I've bought that I has not shown up has to be on uh, first impressions first. And yeah, I just filmed, uh, was it Tuesday? I filmed nine first impressions. Several of them are already empty. Working on a few more. Uh, but, yeah, that that's just uh, how I roll. And that's how I can keep, it, keep a variety going. Uh, certain inks, you know, you don't want to leave sitting in the pen too long. But most of the inks I use are pretty safe. Uh, I have some of those glittery, sparkly inks. Don't use them very much. I have some of those nanoparticle inks. Actually, I may only have just one, come to think of it. But again, don't use it very often. Um, I should. I, I've been thinking I should put it in like a platinum preppy and use it for addressing envelopes or something, but haven't so far. Um, but basically, uh, I always have more pens out, inked up. But I try really hard to focus on these during the week, although I'm not perfect with it. Um, I had an email from a viewer, so I won't identify the viewer because it was a private email. Any, you know, anything in comments is fair game, but you know, private emails, any private communication is not fair game. But anyway, so I'll share the answer to the question because nothing private about the question, just who it is. So I had a question from a viewer who has a pen like this. This is a Central Pen 10014. Here's another one. He actually has a very nice finish on his, so I hope he can get it working. But his pen, he's having trouble getting it to write. So he wondered about taking it apart. Now, I'll be honest, with some pens like this, I've been able to take out this converter type thing. I have not successfully done so in a, cent in a central pen. That said, well, as long as you're careful... If you grip, grip the nib carefully and just start turning, it's threaded. And then uh, hopefully he can make adjustments from there. You know, looking up inside, I have the feeling that this convertery thing is actually glued in place. So unless it's really necessary, I probably would not take the convertery thing out. And same thing, the other pen, this one looks more like the finish he has. The other one looks more like the nib that he has. It's my stripey one. Although neither one's an exact match. And not all central pens do this. It just happens that these two, this particular model, which is what he was asking me about, does unscrew viewer who shall remain anonymous i hope that helps <laughs> anyway i want to thank you all for watching um see my parents are in their mid to late 70s my father will be 80 next year uh, my mother pref prefers not to, ha to not to have people know but <laughs> you know she, she's not uh like some young thing that my father picked up later in life so uh yeah <laughs> But, uh, so they'll be visiting this week, and hopefully I can entertain them, and, uh, you know, they've always worried about the heat. Well, this air conditioner unit does help, so, uh, hopefully that'll help them. And, uh, you know, if we do anything outdoors, we'll just make sure we do it in the morning, or in the evening. So, I want to thank you for watching, and if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, are your parents still around? Uh, if not, what's a really fond memory you have of them? Uh, let us know down in the comments. 
and I want to thank you for watching. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.